I was able to build like crazy universes and, and ecosystems and play universes where things work together. And, and I'm a big fan of trying to figure out, you know, interchangeable systems that work, that are appealing to fans, but also welcome kids in and um, in some ways cultivate new fans. So I think that's going to be really one of the things I've always wanted to bring to Power Rangers. There's just so much to, to pay tribute to in this franchise that um, I think there, there's tons of opportunities to be able to bring those connections together. I think when you look at the fan universe in general, like you've got the MMPR fans, you've got the 2000s fans, you, everyone has their own faces, favorite season. Is there a way to bring, bring those cultures together in a way where we can all celebrate what we love? And then obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of giant robots. So I want to do big robots better, uh, better than I, I think anybody's ever seen them before. And um, that's a big challenge because, you know, not only do you have 30 years of history, but you have love in every single one of those Zords and Megazords, Ultra Zords. And, um, and being able to bring to life something that's from somebody's memory and childhood, that's, that's the biggest honor any designer can have. Well, look, I mean, you really are like the king of mechs. So we're, we're in a good place. Uh, for <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Now, um, a question for uh, John and Bridget. Uh, how do you guys kind of figure out which characters are going into which line? Yeah, well, uh, it's a, really a conversation that happens between the marketing and design team as we talk about the different seasons that we have. I mean, we have 28 seasons of Power Rangers to talk through, and that's hundreds of characters that we can look at, rangers, and it's it's uh, really thinking about how we want to do collections and anniversaries, and we consider what what really helps fill out the balance of the Lightning Collection line, and it's it's really a go back and forth conversation as we think about it, and it, it varies. There's lots of different reasons to choose certain characters, and um, you know, as, as we make the decisions, we listen to the fans, we listen to feedback as well, and it's sort of everything contributes a little bit in the process as we decide who we're going to bring to the collection. I mean, ultimately, as we go forward, we want to try and be as representative of all of the seasons as possible. Like to what John said, there are fans of every season that is out there from Mystic Force to Turbo. So it's it's one of those things that we want to, we, we hear you all, and we want to get Lightning Collection figures out there for every season. It's just we're working on it. <laughs> I yeah, love and I think uh, when you, uh, oh no, go ahead, man. No, I was just saying, I, I love that you mentioned Mystic Force because I want that Liam Bo figure, just saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Come on now, Korag. That's, yeah, that's, Korag. you gotta, you gotta go with Korag. So I, my, my feeling too is like when, um, when I work with Joe and John and, and Loretta specifically, Loretta is our incredibly talented designer. A lot of you guys have met her on the Fan First Fridays. She, she um, helps weave together these different universes in a way that makes our hobby fun. We, we look at different, um, different seasons that are gonna have the anniversaries like Joe's, the John's talking about, but then like, how do we complete collections right. while at the same time introducing a new character that's gonna spark the interest of a new collection of Rangers, you know, and not just, not just the good guys, like the villains and the things that are gonna round out that universe. And then also like, uh, how, do we, how do we bring that diverse cast of characters to life? You know, so that, you know, we have, we have lots of great um, men and women rangers throughout the history. Like, how do we do great tributes to all those characters um, and really showcase all those awesome moments, but also bring to life some of those uh, deep cuts while also trying to keep um, the general fan or, or a person who just maybe knows about, you know, White Ranger or Tommy or something like that engaged, but then show them characters like the Red Sentinel right. that are so cool looking that you, you want to read the comics and go deeper. And I think that's, that's, what, that's what we try to do strategically as we meet and try to weave this universe together a little bit. Now you talk, you just talked about deep cuts and recently you guys announced more metallic armor uh, figures for the lightning collection, but many fans are wondering where is Tommy? When can we expect the right white Ranger uh, in the future lines? So, so I know everybody wants to have more Tommy figures. So we're going <laughs> to <laughs> never enough, Tommy. <laughs> never enough, never enough, Tommy. Um, you know, it's, I guess, stay tuned. It's, it, that's the cool thing about having a, a capsule program. It allows us to build out that universe. We keep, we keep thinking about when those, when is the right time to introduce those characters? 
Um, you know, and that's the cool thing about the Zeo Crystal in general. In gen it's like this awesome MacGuffin piece, Season 3 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It breaks up. Uh, it's a, it, in a way, as you collect these uh, metallic rangers, you're getting a, you're getting a glow in the dark crystal that you can start to build your own Zeo crystal. And that's, and that's a lot of fun. So yeah, any, any opportunity for us to do more Tommy. So we, we heard it here from Joe, make more Tommy figures. Hey, I, I want the Dino <laughs> Thunder Tommy figure. I'm not going to lie. Oh, Dino are you kidding Thunder me? Of course. Iteration go, of go tea, Tommy. Yes. <laughs> go tea, Tommy. Absolutely. <laughs> You know what though? I, I, I have the uh, cat metallic figure and let me say, it's a beautiful piece. Like it's a beautiful piece. And the one thing that really uh, stands out to me is that that shiny element that you put, put into the figure. And honestly, how did you guys achieve that? Cause it is pretty freaking cool. So this, this is all the uh, inside the, the brilliant mind of Loretta. She, she has, a, a, she literally has like, um, you know, they're like these Pantone books where you can call you can choose colors. She has a glitter book with all these different types of glitter. And so it was a combination of glitter, translucent plastic, pearlescent overtone. And if you imagine doing all this work in like a quarantine COVID style environment where you're seeing things on pictures and then you're getting samples from, uh, from overseas, like, and you're looking at them in person, it's, it's, a, it's an incredible thing that she does. So it's a mix of like those glitter and the translucency to get that um sparkly effect like they did in season three like she she's really doing an incredible job and as you look at the ones that were just revealed on pulse yeah you can't really use the same treatment like on a darker character like um like blue ranger or black ranger th those are all you know a slightly different mix so it's Ooh. it's a it, there's a trick to it um no but she's 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 doing an incredible job it's amazing I love the inside baseball about the lightning collection, by the way. <laughs> part of it. Oh, Next yeah. Time. I mean, that's that's what we do. We're we're excited by it. No, it you know, we're we're big production geeks. We we love we love met we love um how it's like how things are made, how to make things better. Um and then there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into these figures between the sculpting, the engineering, the packaging. It's 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 a lot. And well, and you know, fans get to see the end product, but there's so much that goes into them. I mean, that's the thing, because I was, as an adult, I've not, I'm not the biggest action figure collection guy, but I have literally every single uh, lightning collection action figure you guys can put out, except wow. the, the, uh, the, the Rita and Zed uh, wedding special. That's the one I, I haven't gotten yet. Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that's like the funniest commercial ever, Bridget. When I first saw that, <laughs> Bridget, I was like, I still remember I was brand new to the brand and I'm like, what is this? this is amazing. <laughs> Now, uh, personally, which which Rangers do you want to see in the Lightning Collection? Me, personally, Phantom Ranger is my favorite. But which Rangers uh, are, are you looking forward to? Uh, I, I think personally, first, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see Solaris Knight going in there. But I go back to Mystic Force again. But it's just, I like the cape. I like uh, everything about it. It's just cool armor. You know, the, the, the armor pieces, everything about it is cool. It's just a different look, and it's very different. And, and it sort of stands out from the rest of what the Power Ranger seasons do would look like. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, it's, this is, this is like one of those create, like choose your favorite artist. I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, what's not to love about, about Phantom Ranger. Nobody knows who he is. Like there's, it's super rad looking teched out costume. Um, I'm a big fan of blue Centurion. You know, I think yes. that's, that's a really rad figure to do. Like it's, it's, it's just an interesting idea. You know, he's got this, this Mecca that it's like this huge weird car. Like it's, that's really cool. I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, weird foot soldiers. So like the, uh, God, why can't I remember their name? It's escaping me. The foot soldiers from in space, the. Uh, oh, the um, Quantrons. Quantrons. Yes, Quantrons. Yeah, yeah, the Quantrons. They look like, they look like, you know, they're in funny armor and stuff. I'm a big fan of those guys. Um, yeah, I could sit here all day and talk about all the weird things. And Korag from Mystic and Mystic Knights, really, really cool. There's, I, I like things that really push the limits in terms of um, technical expectations. Like, so there's like, you know, armor and things like that is, it's just fun to work on or, or look at. And, and when you think about all your Rangers, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, like our Spandex Rangers, tried and true, it's really cool to have them. But like when, when the seasons mix it up and they do something unusual, that's, that's when it gets really cool for me. That's awesome. Now, Hardcore Power Ranger uh, toy collectors are very serious about their fan accuracy. And you guys have been great at addressing any issues the fans have had. Now, is there anything that the fans have pointed out that you're looking to address in upcoming lines? 
Well, you know, it's it's one of those things like when we um, when we do these reveals, a lot of times, you know, on Twitter, people will point out some things that are inconsistent, um, you know, and I I think it's it's part of the evolution process of working on a land a line like uh, Lightning Collection. There's always room to improve the the portraits, get uh, the morphers more accurate, or something like that. But sometimes that's at the sake of um, you know a figure from two years ago may not match the figure that you're sure. you're getting at retail. So we have to try to figure out what that healthy balance is. But like you know the metallic Ranger Blacks, good example. The belt buckle on that in that sample that we shared didn't have red ring on it. So we're we're able to catch that we're going to be able to affect that piece. So that's, that's very exciting to be able to have that type of interaction. So that's why it's really a gift in a lot of ways to being on a brand like Power Rangers, that the fans really are, um, they're so in love with those details that, that they, um, they help us to become better. You know, we love the brand too. We, we strive for accuracy, but we're also tr always um, trying to figure out how can we make our stuff better. And, and I think that's, that's, that's a good thing. We're all kind of in this together. Now, can you guys talk to me a little bit about Power Ranger Month in August? Sure. Um, so, yeah, a little bit like what we were talking about earlier around the capsule, the Metallic Rangers. Uh, the, it, we're really going to be focused on a couple different sort of thematic groupings of uh, exclusive items with uh, our different retail partners. And it's really leaning into those partnerships with uh, these, these retailers we have fantastic relationships with and just helping to build thematic story points that help these different exclusives hang together. And so uh, there's a reason for them to, to be released at the same time. There's a reason for you guys to want to go out and collect them all at the same time because they're supposed to be sitting next to each other on your shelf. They, they come from the same season or they have the same reason that they're, they're hanging out next to each other. And so really Power Month is gonna be an opportunity for us to celebrate uh, Power Rangers in general as we head into Power Rangers Day at the end of the month on the 28th, but also uh, really gives us this opportunity to tell a couple different stories around these items that we're going to be releasing. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, GameStop is going to be ha is going to have the pink Power Ranger capsule and it's going to be Walmart that's going to have the retro capsule. Is that correct? Yes, that's what's been announced so far. Awesome. And then this is our first time we're getting Aisha in the line of uh, Lightning Collection figures and new portraits for Billy and Rocky. Can you talk to me about uh, when you guys have decided or what goes into the decision making when you decide a new figure uh, gets a uh, redone uh, portrait uh, head sculpt? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's all part of that evolution of design process. You know, we can always strive to do things better. Um, sculpting and design our concept, like Loretta and Corey are, you know, they're the best in their game. And they're always looking for ways to um, introduce some of those great hairstyles. And that's one of the benefits, especially of that Mighty Morphin is that there's so many different hairstyles in there that you could do different portraitures, hairstyles, you know, Billy with or without glasses, that there's, there's room to offer fans something they don't have already. So we figure with the, with the Metallic Rangers, rather than just, you know, give them something that they already have. Let's, let's use this as an opportunity to introduce something fresh and new and even like do some upgrades like that Red Ranger helmet. So that when we have that in our tooling library, we have like a nice upgraded helmet. It's those little, to me, it's those little details that make all the difference. Now, and I, I get, I'm a big fan of Aisha. I mean, yeah, her head too. sculpt turned out awesome. I, I agree. I think, I think that those metallic armor head sculpts look amazing. Now I do have a question though. Uh, for a lot of fans that either missed out on previous figures from other waves, is there, because you guys have done a phen phenomenal job of making sure we get fresh new figures every single wave, which is like in toy lines, that, that's really like kind of unheard of. You usually see figures recycled. However, with, uh, with the Lightning Collection, with for a lot of fans that maybe didn't get previous figures from other waves, do you guys have, um, are planning on releasing some of those past figures? Well, that's an interesting question. And we definitely hear uh, that request from fans. It's something that we'll look into. We can't announce any kind of plans going forward yet, but we hear you. We understand the desire to, you know, get some of those figures that maybe you missed the first time around. And we're always looking to fulfill what uh, our fans really need and are looking for. So stay tuned for further information and other announcements. Now for, uh, look, I, that Red Sentinel, whoo, you guys blew me away. Like that was amazing, but I gotta ask. So we it famously in the comics, the world of the coinless, uh, Skull is one of the primary Red Sentinels. Uh, is there any plans to release uh, Bulk and Skull or even Rangers in their civilian uh, cost, their civilian, uh, I guess, attire? 
Yeah, it's trick, right? The uh, the civilian outfits end up being a little trickier because when you tool up a you know a male ranger from a specific season, like let's say we do like a light speed rescue guy or something like that, you're gonna you're gonna dedicate some some pieces of that sculpt. They're gonna be able to reuse. You're gonna be able to get some things. So the civilian outfits, some of them are you know you could if you think about you know Zach's Zach's pants, baggy like. 90s pants you might be able to yeah. get those legs and and reuse them with uh you know like billy has the coverall like so there's some things you could we could you could work with but uh, but you know it's it's that delicate balance of like yeah. how can we do it while still offering fans great value but also being a really accurate tribute to what they saw that's what makes those civilian outfits a bit of a challenge um bulk and skull though that's that i mean there's there's a legacy of several seasons uh throughout power rangers history that we need to figure out a way to pay tribute to those guys their outfits change all the time too so it's like which bulk and skull do you do <laughs> so i don't know i i am i really like his appearance a cameo in that um in the world of the coin list i think there's an opportunity to do a uh to do that figure as red century with that head sculpt i think it's all about thinking about our long game you know sure we got Mastodon Sentry still and things like that. We could we could do something special with Bulk um, that could really set him apart. And you know, we wanted his first release to be kind of an army builder and and a neutral enough character that you could build him up behind Dracon and kind of have your your squad ready to go. Man, when you said Mastodon Sentry, my heart started racing. I was like, Man. oh my gosh, who doesn't love that guy? It's incredible, right? Now, <laughs> yeah. the last question I have for you is, uh, look. Dino Fury is hitting on all cylinders. It is an amazing season so far. I love Dino Fury. And when can we see this team in lightning collection form? Because those are some of the most beautiful uh, Ranger suits I've seen in a long time. They're just such beautiful suits to look at. Oh, and I mean, come on, like Zato is, he's great. Like the Rangers, the characters themselves are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, John, what do you, what do you say? Uh, you know, uh, stay tuned. We're, we we love to hear it. We're super excited about them too. Love that you like the, the costumes as well and they're like armor pieces. We totally agree. Um, can't reveal anything yet, so stay tuned. Well, look, guys, you guys have been an absolute pleasure to talk to. I can't wait to see uh, more of these figures hitting my shelves and coming into my home so I can get yelled at for spending more money on Lightning Collection. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Look, I, I love talking to you guys. I can talk to you guys all day long. Look, I, I have that. Oh, it's, it's over here somewhere. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I just picked them up. <laughs> amazing. Guys, thank you so much. This has been an amazing chat. I mean, I love talking Lightning Collection stuff. You well, bet, man. You, Anytime. Joe. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.